Well, he's a wizard, he's a king. He wears a slightly satanic ring. He's the mighty dungeon master, the grumpy Gary Kai Kai. That's me. Hey everyone, I'm Chet Ritlin. Welcome to Ask Gary Gygax. We here at Hidden Histories are incredibly happy to have this opportunity to be a conduit to this amazing man, the creator of Dungeons and Dragons, the mighty dungeon master Gary Gygax. Gary, thank you so much for being here. You're welcome. Today's question comes from Magnum's Eyes 12. Dear mighty dungeon master Gary Gygax, if I have leather armor, does it have to look like leather armor, or can it look like something else? Are all the questions gonna be like this? Because even though in the afterlife time is infinite and non-linear, I still have things I'd rather be doing. Well, that's it for today's episode. If you have a question you'd like to ask Gary, be sure to leave it in the comments below, and be certain to begin your question by addressing Gary properly, and that is Dear Mighty Dungeon Master Gary Gygax. Contractually, we can't present Gary with any questions that are not started this way. Thanks again for tuning in. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. See you next time. Let's do this. All right, today we have a question from L. Smith 783 Dear Mighty Dungeon Master Gary Gygax, can you stab a skeleton? Stab it with what, your dick? <laughs> I'm sorry, that was rude. Uh, but yeah, it's a skeleton, not a ghost or a wraith or apparition. I think it can be stabbed. Jesus. Well, hey everyone. Welcome back to Ask Gary Gygax. As you probably already know, we have a bona fide hit on our hands. Mostly thanks to Gary's personality. I would give it a charisma score of 19, 20. What do you think, Gary? Yeah, sure. Okay, we have new episodes every Monday and Friday, so be sure to like and subscribe, right, Gary? Just bring on the questions, please. Okay, today's question comes from Buzix. Dear Mighty Dungeon Master Gary Gygax, Are you aware of this moderately popular author called Tolkien stealing some of your more popular creations like elves, orcs, dwarves, and Bebo, the hopping jongleur? Ha 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 ha. Very funny. B U Z G Z. Asshole. Chet, what did I say about letting people troll me? This is unacceptable, Chet. Okay, bye, Gary. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to Ask Gary Gygax. You ready to do this, Gary? <sighs> All right. Today's question comes from Galactic Dragon Fruit. Dear Mighty Dungeon Master Gary Gygax, what is the secret of your slightly satanic ring? And what's the max souls you've trapped inside of it at one time? Mine's three. Trapped souls? No, no, my ring is only slightly satanic. It sounds like someone sold you a line of bullshit. Thanks, Gary. See you next time. And... Hey, everyone. Welcome back. Once again, to ask Gary Gygax. Gary, it's great to see you. Can we just get this over with? Please, thank you. So, before we get started, I need to make a little correction. Last week we posted that we were number one on YouTube, but I did have a little asterisk there saying if you search Ask Gary Gygax, but we were told that was still misleading. We are actually uh, 1,295,998,000,000-ish on YouTube. <laughs> so now that we have that out of the way, you ready to do this, Gary? All right, yeah, yeah, let's go. All right, today's question comes from Jeffro Klebando. Dear Mighty Dungeon Master Gary Gygax, what would happen if I encased myself in a seamless glass container and was engulfed in a gelatinous cube? And could I still cast Healing Spirit? Are you sure that maybe uh, you haven't already done that? I mean, it sounds like perhaps you're not getting enough oxygen to your brain. Okay, bye Gary. Thanks. 
Hey, Gygax heads, welcome back to Ask Gary Gygax, where you get to uh, interact and ask questions of the mighty dungeon master and creator of Dungeons and Dragons, Gary Gygax. Hey, Gary, how you doing today? Uh, yeah, I'm here. Okay, well, our question today comes from Ethan Studios. Dear Mighty Dungeon Master Gary Gygax, what was the first group of players you played your first session with, and what was the first campaign? Well, the first campaign was called The Maddening, and I'd rather not talk about it. Bye, Gary. Thanks for your time. Hey, welcome back, Guy Gaxy X. Hey, Gary, how you doing today? Yada yada. All right. Well, today's question comes from CKW. It was asked on July twenty seventh, which is uh, Gary Gygax Day and Gary's birthday. Dear Mighty Dungeon Master Gary Gygax, I'm told July twenty seventh is Gary Gygax Day. How are you celebrating? You know, a simple happy birthday would suffice. On your birthday, do they say happy CKW day? It's almost borderline insulting. All right, thanks Gary. Have a good day. Hey everyone, welcome back to Ask Gary Gygax. Hey Gary, you ready to get into these questions? I can't wait for the questions. Today we have a question from Wild Pot Smoker 69 Dear Mighty Dungeon Master Gary Gygax, for an arrow to reach its target, it has to travel half its distance and then half that distance, et al. It can never hit its target. Did you work that into the missile mechanics? Uh, yeah, I'll have some of what this guy's smoking. Jesus, who the hell is screening these questions? Uh, no one. No one's screening the questions. Oh, yeah. Makes sense. Okay, bye Gary. Hey everyone, welcome back to Ask Gary Gygax. Hey Gary, how you doing today? Let's go, I'm very busy. Okay, today's question is from Bat Money. Dear Mighty Dungeon Master Gary Gygax, Do you play Magic the Gathering? Magical gatherings, eh? never heard of it. But if I didn't know any better, I'd swear someone new was ripping off my system. See you later, Gary. Thanks. Hey, everyone. Welcome back. You know what time it is? It's- Yeah, Chet. It's Gygax time. Let's get on with the questions, please. Okay, okay. Uh, today's question, um, comes from Curtis Nettleship. Dear Mighty Dungeon Master Gary Gygax, how is wisdom obtained? Uh, well, um, just like any of your other character attributes, your wisdom would be obtained by rolling three six-sided dice and then adding the roll totals together. And, uh, now go forth and enjoy my world and the universe that I created. Okay. Thanks, Gary. Have a good day. Uh hey, everyone. Welcome back to Ask Gary Gygax. I'm Chet Ritlin. And Chet Ritlin. Is that your real name? Yeah. You're a real bitch. Uh, okay. Um, today's question comes from Genial Fest. Dear Mighty Dungeon Master Gary Gygax, if you die and become a ghost, whose life would you make a living hell? Uh, first of all, am dead. Have been for some time now. About a dozen years, in fact. Uh, second of all, who would I haunt? Let me think. Um, well, I could spend my time haunting people, or I could spend my time in the studio answering these questions. Chet, what is this bullshit? Uh, I, uh, it seems to uh, me this whole operation has been rat-fucked from the get-go. Okay, thanks, Gary. Bye. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to Ask Gary Gygax. Um, hey, Gary, how's it going today? Ah, uh, hey there, Chad. Ah, uh, it's 
sorry about calling you a bitch last week. I, I was having a bad day. As you might know, I am prone to those. We all are, Gary. It's a hard time for everyone, Chet. Um, well, we have a question for you. You ready? Uh, I'm as ready as I'll ever be. The question today is from Bard Jedi 33 Dear Mighty Dungeon Master Gary Gygax, who would win in a battle between a level 20 wizard and Darth Vader? Ah, uh, this is like the classic battle between the three paperclips and the Lego Stormtrooper. There's no knowing who would win. It is two completely different systems. Our viewers want to understand sort of some more in-depth insights into the D&D system. Ah, well, I don't see what comparing against another fictional universe is going to do for anyone. I just, I just don't understand how that could possibly enhance anyone's understanding of either thing. We're just guessing at okay. this point. Aren't we really? I mean, there's no hit points for yeah, Darth sure, Vader. Sure, sure. I don't know what his sure, intelligence sure, sure. is. I don't know sure. what his charisma is. I don't know what any of his attributes are. And I don't know how to even roll a saving throw against his force choke. Okay, okay, Gary. We've invited a guest today, and that is the creator of the Star Wars, George Lucas. Welcome, everybody, George Lucas. What the fuck? Who the hell is this guy? What the hell is he in? Oh, my God. Did I sign off on this? Is this in my contract? There is nothing in the contract saying we can't have guests. So, uh, welcome George Lucas. How you doing, George? Uh, I, I, I feel a little bit unwelcome. In my first foray into this format, uh, I feel a little bit like I am intruding. George, you're welcome here, always. Thank you for being here. So who do you think might win in a battle between a... Wait a second! What the fuck is happening now? You're just asking this guy the question? He's not just this guy, he's the creator of the Star Wars, Gary. I get that part, but this is Ask Gary Gygax, and I don't believe that I signed off on this. I don't believe this is part of my show whatsoever. I didn't get a cool thing to emerge from. I just have to do my own spells. I think this is wrong. Okay, Gary. I'm sorry, uh, but we can absolutely have guests. George, George, are you all right? I'm going to cast a spell on this guy. Go ahead, Gary. Cast a spell then, buddy. Hey, George, how you feeling? Um, well... I thought I felt a slight tingle. Oh, but that could just be my medication that I'm taking currently for my depression. I, I, do you, would, would, would you still like me to answer a question? Yeah, George, tell us who you think might win a battle between level 20 Wait a second! This, are, this is still happening. Okay, you guys can carry on with Ask George Lucas for all I care. I am just gonna peace the fuck out. See you later, Chet. See you later, George. Okay, bye, Gary. Thanks. We appreciate it. Well, um, George, do you want to answer the question of, about uh, who am I? I? I really do not feel comfortable now. I I feel like I have offended Gary. I really would like to just extend my sincere apologies to Gary for any ways that I might have offended him. Okay, okay. Th th thanks, George. Alright, guys. Uh, that's it for Ask Gary Gygax this Monday. Tune in on Friday for another episode. And if you want to address Gary, make sure to say Dear Mighty Dungeon Master Gary Gygax. Because if you don't, we can't actually address him contractually. Alright, see you next time. Dar Dar Bye. Darth, Darth, Darth Vader would have won the fight. From where you're sitting watching hidden histories on your phone or computer, this looks seamless, as it should. It's called the magic of showbiz. But to put together one of these episodes takes a long time. In particular, Ask Gary Gygax is an incredibly long and arduous process. Well, he's a wizard, he's a king. 
He wears a slightly satanic ring. He's the mighty dungeon master, the grumpy Gary Kai The process begins with this, a common and popular ghost hunting tool called a spirit box. This is the SB7, popular with all the great ghost hunters, and it's the one I use. Now the spirit box scans available radio frequencies quickly, and it will occasionally spit out bits of audio that are from the spirit world. This is actually how I found Gary. He's been one of the more communicative spirits that I've contacted. Now what I do is I ask questions and try and get Gary to talk, and I record the output, often hours and hours and hours of material, because his voice comes through very fragmented. Gary? Um, Gary, are you there? Yeah. Oh, it's time to do the Gary Gygax show. Uh, it's time for Ask Gary Gygax. Gary, okay. are you ready to go? Here. It's time to do the show. Ready. Gary? All right. Uh, Gary? Something. After recording my initial session, I then put that material into my computer and I cut out all the garbage in between his little snippets and I construct his replies. This can sometimes take days. Um. Um. Um, yeah. Hello. Yeah, hello. Um, yeah, hello. Um, yeah, hello. I'm here, buddy, all right? Then I take this old photo of Gary looking lonely and holding a model rocket. I animate it so his mouth is moving, giving him the illusion of life. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, hello. I'm here, buddy, all right? Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Ask Gary Gygax. Gary, how are, how are you this week? Uh, I'm okay, Chet. I, I do wish to apologize for my behavior last week. I do think I kind of flew off the handle and... I didn't handle the surprise very well, and I I think that, you know, somebody of the stature of George Lucas deserved better than that, and I'm sorry. Everybody here at Hidden Histories thought that it would be an exciting thing for you. Obviously it should have been, and I, I, you know, I got a lot on my mind up here, and when I come here, I am always ready to be angry because it just seems to go wrong every time. And I think I was ready for the worst and I acted my worst. And for that, I am sorry. That's appreciated. We are so happy to have you here. And contractually, we are literally meeting every one of those contractual agreements so we don't get any... The uh, only thing I requested in the contract was that everyone had to refer to me as the mighty dungeon master, Gary Gygax. And that is the only request. And if you get hung well, up on the well, other legal terms and all this blah, blah, blah... I'm just going to check right out. I'm just going to be like a zombie mode. You're going to see Zombie Gary. And you don't want that because Zombie Gary eats brains. Okay, well, well, today's question is uh, from uh, Boba Fett at 420. Oh, I get it. Like Like the cheese. Dear Mighty Dungeon Master Gary Gygax, why are you so upset to have other fantasy realms such as Star Wars involved in your world? What? What? What is this? Uh, is this, an, this is another surprise. Oh, yep. Here it comes. Oh my God! Here comes the entrance. What is it? It's the it's the Darth Vader meditation chamber. All right, all right. Okay. Well, I said fool me once, shame on me. And now I have to say fool me twice, shame on you, Chet. Good day, sir. Hey, George. Uh, sorry, Gary just left. I mi- I missed Gary. Well, yeah, you missed him. He got a little upset. Oh well. Uh, d- were we supposed to have a uh, joint question? Well, there's a question for you. 
specifically for me? Okay. I, I am ready to answer a question this time. That would be um, great. It, it's from I Love Lizards 79 and the question is, how did you come up with the idea of the Gungans? When I was a small child, I had a pet salamander, Sammy Salamander. I had a grandmother named Jam Jam in my imagination. I imagined all of a whole race of salamander people. They were people who were somewhat morphed with a salamander. They were like anthropomorphic, I guess you would call salamanders. They were they were like seven feet tall. My salamander Sam was just a silly creature. It would do silly things. And that's uh, kind of how I, I pictured my, my, my character Jar Jar Binks, who I thought was one of my most clever creations. A little bit of slapstick humor, which is a another homage to other influences from my youth. I was trying to please the children, which I'm starting to think you're a bit of a child yourself, uh, Chet. Uh, uh, well, well, I didn't mean it in a negative way. It's good to have a childlike heart, which I can tell that you do. I can tell by your exuberance and your laughter. You're someone who loves life, and I love life too, and I'd like to share my life with you through these questions. That's fantastic, George. Uh, we're going to figure out how to do that, right? Are we? Okay. Well, I'll be in my meditation chamber if you need me. If you have any further questions, or if any of my audience members have questions, you can address me any way you like. Just don't call me Jerry. Ha! <laughs> All right. Thanks, George. We'll talk to you later. Hey, everyone. Thanks for checking us out. Before we get started, the team wanted me to let you all know that the Star Wars Episode 4 and Season Finale of Hidden Histories is on the way. They wanted me to pass along their sincere apologies for the delay. They said they ran into what they described as an imperial entanglement. <laughs> but they said it should be out next Wednesday so you can stop emailing them. And away we go! Welcome back to Ask Gary Gygax. Hey Gary, how you doing? Uh, are you, uh, are you set to answer some questions? What do you do, cast a cricket spell? Okay, today we have a question from Uncut Wizard 9 and the question is, Dear Mighty Dungeon Master Gary Gygax, what percentage of an owlbear is an owl? Well, huh, this is actually a pretty good question. Well, as you know, with an owl bear, only the head is owl and the rest is bear. So one might say that physically they are about 10% owl, but in terms of their instincts and mentality, it's more like 10% bear, which makes them 90% owl, mentally. Well, thank you so much, Gary. That was very eye-opening. That's exactly what I intended when we started this, was that we could get some deep D&D &D info from you, because... All right, bye, Gary. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Ask Gary Gygax. Uh, hey, Gary, how you doing today? All right. Um, today's question comes from Guignol Fest. Dear Mighty Dungeon Master Gary Gygax, can you give us a few tips on painting pewter D&D &D miniatures for the beginner and also for the advanced? Thank you. Small brush. All right. Bye, Gary. Uh, fuck. Okay. See you guys next time. Bye.